my daughter got in a car accident and totaled the car, but by the grace of God, not a scratch, just a little bruise. The car is gone, but I still have my daughter. Isn't he good? Isn't God good? Amen. And then after that, the air conditioning went up. <laughs> but thank God for home, American Home Shield. Thank God for that. You're reading my book. <laughs> and then we got the air, the air conditioning fixed. Thank God that was $800 instead of $2,300. And then the turnaround, the garbage disposal went up on Sunday. But thank God I had a neighbor to help me with it. But, you know, I, 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 whenever I come here, it's, it's, it, it uplifts my spirit. It gives this place where the spirit dwells, gives me the power to go on. Amen. And also, bless, I always say it, you have a, 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 just a good pastor here. And I, I've just seen him early in the week r riding his golf course. And I said, oh, look at him. Go up the pastor. He's just a great guy. But... The, the, the thing is, you know, I just want to thank God that just for Jesus the, and the word and, and, and just when the, the brother was speaking here, it, it just went through me and the brother went there and was speaking here. It, the spirit speaks through us. Yes. And all the couple of weeks I was thinking about heritage. Mm -hmm. Here it ages. And the good things ages. Because when we plant those seeds, God waters those seeds. Yes. And, and everything's agricultural here. What we put in here comes out here. That's right. What a man thinketh, yeah. so is he. Yeah. And that's why we always have to be into the word. That's right. You know? Absolutely. But I, I just want to thank God that Amen. he brought me through it all. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah today and um, he was very 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 pleased and well I still had to see again four months but I mean it's still continuing but he was very very pleased and so Thank I just want to just give God all the glory and um, yes and then um, I mean all my tests came back well and but Scott's got to go tomorrow for his um, checkup for that mm -hmm. situation and just pray for I mean, he's got the victory. I know he's got Amen. the victory. I know. Amen. God's a good God. God's a good God. Amen. Great God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so. okay, he did very good. Verse 4, or is it 24? 24. 2.24. Do you believe that God's will is going to be done on Friday? Whether there's one person. Um, 2 Timothy 2.24, or 50 people, or it doesn't matter. If you believe God's will is going to be done, and we're here, and we allow him to flow through us, then his will is going to be done. Amen. That's all that matters. Amen? Amen. We, do the, we, do, we do what God has told us to do. We're faithful in what God has told us to do, and then he does the rest. Right. Who knows? We might have one person just one person that shows up that needs Jesus and that one person is going to tell somebody and that person is going to tell somebody and the next thing you know that one meeting that we worked so hard for has reached an entire nation just think in my, in my life that day that I gave my life to Christ who would have known that I would, be, have, would become a pastor and win many people to Christ Amen. in my lifetime? Amen. One person. Oh, how about Billy Graham? Or Roberts? Yeah, or Michelle Daughter? Hello, Willie Tillman. Yeah. Mike Wolf. Well, there you go. That's right. All the rest of them. Now you're preaching. Go ahead. Let's read this out loud together. And the servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, fighting and contending. Instead, he must be kindly to everyone and mild-tempered, preserving the bond of peace. He must be a skilled and suitable teacher, patient and forbearing, and willing to suffer wrong. When we come here on Friday, it is not about us telling them. 
It is not about this big argument. Our way is the right way. And y'all are going to hell in a handbasket. It's not about that. It's about what Mike said. We're here to love them. Don't let your feelings get hurt. If you got problems with rejection and issues with reacting to people's things, take a deep breath and cover yourself before you get in here so you don't bleed all over everybody else. Some of us have areas that get touched sometimes and we get a little bit defensive. Hello, am I the only one? Let's be ready. Let's be ready when they come in and know that no matter what happens, no matter what they say or do, we're doing God's will by loving first. Talking about how many people come or how many people don't come, the first Saturday in August in 1972, they had a revival in the Baptist Church in Bono. Now, who goes to church on Saturday? <laughs> uh, but it was it was a revival, and so it was lasting all week. But the place was full. But only one person got saved, and that was me. So, you know, you you see, you look around. Uh, that may not have been a very successful night in some people's eyes. But in my eyes, it was life-changing. That's right. And I had one aunt that uh, had been praying for me. When I got saved, I kind of looked to see, see where she was. And she was all the way in the back. And her face was as red as could be. And, and I looked down. And I looked back up and she was gone. And I saw her after the service. And I says, Aunt Betty, where'd you go? She said, well, I was about to speak in tongues. And I didn't think I ought to do that in the Baptist <laughs> church. <laughs> so she, she went on. She slipped on outside and, and, uh, <laughs> and praised the Lord. It's amazing when you pray for people. And they get saved, how it affects you, you know? So it, you know, it was, and I, I called her my other mother. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she, she helped birth me into the, into the kingdom, you know? So, but point being, the results, you may, you may not see the results immediately. Or, or you may. It's kind of like that guy that, that I prayed with at the paper mill. The, the, the truck dumper wasn't working, and I went down there to work on the truck dumper. And God sent this guy that just wanted to be saved. And this was, this was 10 years ago. And I talked to him the other day, and he asked me if I was still preaching. I said, yeah. I said, are you still serving the Lord? He says, yeah. And you know, when you, when you lead somebody to the Lord, and 10 years later they're still serving the Lord it, it just gets you down in here you know it just it's just a blessing Amen. you guys see this cup of water up here well if you can't see it I'll bring it closer this is how we need there was a fish in there today <laughs> did you drink it a frog was there really it must be something about creatures, because we found this humongous snapping turtle in my front yard today, and I've never seen one that big in my life. It's as big as your head. Wow. Huge. In the middle of her yard, just camping out. Chilling. <laughs> you know, and do they lay it in mud? I mean, in the mud? Because he was rubbing himself back and forth, and I thought, what are you doing? And there's this little pile of mud right behind him. And I thought, I wonder if he's laying eggs in that mud. And here I told Jonathan to go take him and put him somewhere else. So, <laughs> whoo, he planted his seed right there for it to grow, and it's going to open up, and it's going to come crawling all over my yard. Yeah, this is true. She. See this cup of water? 
That's the way we need to be on Friday. Ready to pour out. Ready to pour out. Ready to pour out. Are you ready to pour out? Transparent. Anybody else? Full. Pure. Refreshing. Living. Living water. Not some old dead prune face. What else? Necessary. You cannot live without this. Anybody else? That's, good. That's what we're to be. Yeah. Every day. Not just Friday. Like Willie was saying earlier. That's right. We have to make a decision. There you go. A decision every day. In season and out of season. You know, Floyd t taught a lesson once on every day is Christmas. Yeah. It's not just one day. Every day is celebrating the birth of yeah. our Savior. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. It should be so much a part of us. And the inside, it's like, I just can't wait to tell you. Yeah. Can't wait for someone to come to the house. Yeah. I don't care who they are. Knock on my door. Come on in. I got something for you. And have all your material ready. Have your material ready. Who's, who's got little tables with Christian material out? Bibles, tracts, anything close to your door for anyone who comes in. All right? Who's got them in their door when you go through your drive throughs to get your food or you see somebody? There you go. Where, wherever you can to pass out the word. Be full, constantly full. Amen. Amen. That's good. All right, anybody? First scripture on the board. I want to put... Um, Colossians chapter 1, let's start with verse 9. Be up on the board. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Paul is speaking un <clears throat> under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. For this reason we also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. Now, <clears throat> when you read the word of the Lord, always find out what Paul's praying. And that's what we are to pray. That's what we are to pray right there. And so write that scripture down and, uh, because, because the Holy Spirit make, will make all of that alive and it becomes alive to us when we can be filled with the deep and clear knowledge of his will. Okay, go to the next verse now. So once we learn that and once this, that becomes real to us, that verse of scripture comes real to us, notice this, that you may walk live and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and designed to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, de deeper and clearer insight, acquaintance and recognition. Now, <clears throat> There are some churches that don't even mention the Holy Spirit. But you need to realize there's one teacher, and that's the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's been given to us to teach us, to comfort us, to direct us, to guide us. So your attention must go to him and begin to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee that God will keep his promises. And he's been given to every Christian individual. I remember when I made this discovery many years ago. And I began to rely upon the Holy Spirit to reveal to me the will of God. And as I look back on my life tonight, uh, since of me have never tried to do this or tried to do that. We just follow the Holy Spirit. And it just opened up. Everything, this building, this land, being called into the ministry, we just had a heart to serve. 
And wherever we saw the need, we moved in there and tried to fulfill that need as the Holy Spirit directed us, whether it was cutting the grass at the church, cleaning the buildings, and we've done it all. We've done it all in our day, more than once, hundreds of times. We've done it all in our day. We have gone to projects, we've gone to house to house, visiting, all of those things, you, you name it. I mean, we've been involved in revivals. We used to have revivals that, uh, and uh, we would uh, go out and uh, house to house and try to win souls and, we'd, and we, we won some souls. But we have found over the years, and this is what we practice, wherever we go, we're on duty. Wherever we go, we are soul winners. We go to, we go to uh, and uh, some of you have been with Susan and me, and uh, you see how we do it. And it's just like everybody's, like I know everybody. That's right. And I just walk up to them and, and strike up a conversation with them. And uh, in fact, yesterday Susan and me went by and uh, my favorite place, uh, what is it, the Hardy's oh, used to, well, no, okay, well, that's one of my favorite places. <laughs> no, this is Dairy Queen now, Dairy Queen. You, you, so you get these French fries, and you get this hamburger, and, and then you get this ice cream, and this tea, see? And, uh, and you get it all for $5.50. So I'll take two. <laughs> But there was, there was uh, some people that uh, worked at the water works. There was about six men out there and one woman. They were all, so I walked right up to them. And, 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 the, and, the, and I say, how are you guys doing? And they all stopped what they were doing. I said, Look, I've got to tell you this joke. I think you'll appreciate it. And they said, hey, what, what, what is it? I said, let me tell you about this dog. This, this, this person that loved this dog so much. And he went into the front room, Willie. And the dog laying on the floor and he wasn't breathing. Oh, my dog ain't breathing. Picked him up, put him in the car, took him to the veterinarian, put him on the floor, say, Doc, my dog, what's wrong with him? He ain't breathing. Well, I got to examine him. Well, go ahead and examine him. So the doctor opened this door and this dog come out. And it was a lab dog, Phil. And the lab dog come over there and went around the dog once and went around the dog twice, and, and he sniffed the dog. And he went back into the room, and, and, the dog, and the doctor shut the door. And the dog said, hmm, let me check one more area out. So he opened, goes over there and opens this other door, and this cat comes out. And the cat comes over, goes around the door. They're all listening like that, you know. So you got to draw them in. Am, am I drawing y'all in? See, and the cat goes around the dog once and twice, sniffs him, goes back into the room. The doctor shuts the door and says, yeah, he dead. Oh, my dog is dead. <clears throat> well, how much you owe you, Doc? Uh, $400. $400 for what? Well, 200 for the lab test and 200 for the CAT scan. <laughs> and by the way, have y'all had y'all's uh, vitamins today? There we go. I'm sure glad I got a few of them to get. I know here's one for you, young lady. I know you'll enjoy that too. That's the way you do it. So loosen up and get out there and get with it. And remember the joke. You can have it and use it there. All right. that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. Now notice, he's in the pray, praying mood here. Notice this, we pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance well, and patience and perseverance and, and forbearing word of God. with joy. And try to get acquainted with those prayers as much as you can and pray the word. How many of you know God watches over his what? Word to perform it. 
okay? So pray the word, pray the word. We need to learn to pray. And most of the people here at the Shale have learned to do that. Pray the word, which is, by the way, God's will. See? Okay. Now listen. Giving thanks to the Father. I love this verse of Scripture. Who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion, which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people, in the light. Now, I want you to look at that. Giving thanks to the Father. So we give thanks to the Father all the time. I do. I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. I thank you, Lord, for my wife, my children. Thank you for that hot cup of coffee I had this morning. Thank you. I just thank the Lord. I'm, I'm in that mode all the time. Thanking God for everybody. All right, notice this. Who has qualified and made us fit? Who? Who, who did that? Who? That's right, the Father. We don't have to try to make ourselves fit. He does that. He did that. He's already done that. See, remember what I say. We have to learn what the Lord has done for us and what he's doing in us right now. That he, that he that has done something for us and is doing something in us, he might do something through us. Okay? All right. Keep that in mind. Notice this now. I love it. Mm -mm. That's the next verse. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Now, he's done that for us. Amen. Now, you keep that on the top of your, of, your, of your mind, that he's done it. Let's read that again. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself. Everybody say, I belong, I belong. To, God. to God. Okay, see, that is, when you say, I accept the Lord as my Savior, uh, Americans don't know what really lordship is all about. You, you see, uh, if he's Lord, that means he's Lord. <laughs> and whatever he tells us to do, we do it. When I get around to it, I mean. <laughs> no. He's Lord. Everybody say, he's Lord. He's Lord. That's so important to remember. When you read the scriptures in there, we'll see that, see, Christ, Christ came to this earth and paid the price and died for us to bring us to the Father. That's in the scriptures. You see, he died, yes, to cleanse us of our sins and to redeem us and then to and, and clean us all up, and then he brought us to the Father. So, the, so God the Father, see, we, we, we're now, we're with him. And we can come to the throne of God where the Father is and we can uh, uh, come boldly and, and without fear, and we can share our heart to our Heavenly Father. Do you know what a father is? I deal with a lot of people who don't really know what a father is. And you have to learn that He's your Heavenly Father, and He'll never do you wrong. He loves you so much. You see, the Father sent the Son to die. And the son was obedient because he obeyed the father. And now we're sons and daughters of God. Now he is sending us into the world as his representatives to share that God has already reconciled the world back to himself through his son. There's nothing we can do to work for our salvation. Why should you work? Because, see, it's a gift. Salvation is a gift. For we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Unmerited favor. Someone says, I don't deserve it. That's right. None of us did. 
But you see, I'm sort of like John. What manner of love is this, Willie? That God could send his only begotten son to save me and to bring me back to the Father. And see, when you read in Luke about the prodigal son, that's what we were. We were all prodigal sons. And I love when I can just see that picture of, the, of his son coming. He's all ragged up, and just like you uh, showed us the other day on your message. And, and, and the father ran to, the, to his son. I am a father. I got three girls, and I got grandchildren and great grandchildren. There's nothing I wouldn't do for them. So this would be do everything we can. And we don't have to, but love. See, love, that's the way love is. Well, I just don't want to serve the Lord. Please don't, 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 because you've got the wrong attitude. <laughs> see, see, Paul says it's the love of Christ that motivates me. It's the love of Christ that, that moves me to do what I'm doing. And so many people, they just like to do something. They just like to serve. They, uh, they just like to be busy doing things and doing that and all. What is motivating? Your need to do something, or is it the love of God motivating you to do what you're doing? Are you listening tonight? Amen. Amen. See, we need to make sure that we check that out, that we're just not busy just to be busy. But we are, it, it is that love in us. And see, it was that love of God he so loved us that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is a degree of knowledge that the church needs today and that is the degree that we need to understand and the Holy Spirit would open up to us that knowledge of the love of God. Because what you're trying to do, it ain't trying no more. <laughs> Susan, we've been married 63 years, and I can't, I can't get, and I'm, I'm, I, now this is clean things that I'm talking here. This is clean. I, I, I can't keep my hands off of it sometimes, Phil. And I'm 84 years old. Praise God. <laughs> Robert W. Tilton Moore. I want more. <laughs> Sometimes she, well, we we take a nap, and I reach over there, and I just lay my hand on her, and I, it's like, oh, Father. And she's the same, can't keep her hands off of me. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't blame her, really. <laughs> my name is Jimmy. That's right. <laughs> okay, I, I, I want to get where I want to get here now directly. All right, now, l l just let the Word speak to us tonight. Now, look, look, look at 14, verse 14. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of all our sins. Now, would you look at me tonight? I don't have a sin on me. That blows some people out of the chair. No, wait a minute, let's make sure we read that. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. If your sins have been forgiven, what sins do you have, Willie? None. Huh? None. None. It, 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 I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't say we couldn't sin. Now don't get me wrong. You can sin anytime you choose to. Just open your mouth. <laughs> That's why I keep mine shut as much as I can. <laughs> you see, when you grab that, when you grab that, you're clean. Can you hear that? You're clean. Yes. Clean. You, clean. What, what, what see, see when that's made alive to you, you're clean. All sin. And by things the way, begin God to crumble in the, the sin devil that they do because they do as far as the east is from the west, he's removed See, them. The but I thank God, God's made provision. If something happens that I did sin, what would I do, Willie? 
That's right, 1 John 1, 9. Amen? But I walk in 1 John 1, 7. Just turn to 1 John 1, 7 real quick. Like, this is where we're to walk each day. Then we'll get back into Colossians. But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship, notice this, with one another. Now, if we're not, you and me, if not having any fellowship, one of us, one of us ain't walking in the light. Right. Are you listening? Right. Now look what it says. We have, un, we, have uh, <clears throat> we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses, removes us from all sin. Oh, I love that. Removes us from all sin and cleanses us from all sin. Two things there. And cleanses us and removes us from all sin. And guilt. You got guilt on you tonight? Don't try to think about did I sin. The Holy Spirit will let you know. See, if you walk it in the Spirit, see there, this is what it's so important. You walk it in the Spirit, you don't have to go... Uh, I was talking to a young lady the other day. She said, well, you know, every night I, I just say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I said, well, honey, what did you do today? Well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But just, I just want to be on the safe side. Now, I've been there. Have you? Uh, some of you might be still there. <laughs> just in case, you know. But, but see, so you have to learn to walk in it. And most of you people are doing that. And he'll let you know. And, and, and if he does it, just don't worry about that. Don't even think about that. Don't be sin conscious. Be resurrected conscious. Be cleansed conscious. Be conscious of God. See, that's important. That's why the blood of Jesus Christ has to cleanse our conscience. You get your conscience cleansed. And when the accuser comes, you know how to handle him. No, nope, the blood's cleansed me. I'm clean by the blood. Because, folks, you can't get no cleaner. Amen. Ain't no need to get any steel wool or a, 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 a file and try to file it. No, 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 no. The blood does not lose its power. Amen. But see, that revelation has to come into, the, into your psychic, into your heart, into your mind. Instead of walking around guilty and under me. And I've been there. How many have been there? Oh, it's horrible horrible but see God don't lie God don't lie see I begin to learn about the father and when he says something <laughs> absolute truth absolute truth mm. all right let's get on here now let's see remove us from, uh, removes us from all sin and guilt keeps us cleansed from sin listen keeps us cleansed from all sin Keeps us. Keeping power of God. Keeping power of the blood. Keeps us from all sin. I love it. That's how powerful the blood of Christ is. Look what it says. Remove us from all sin and guilt. Keeps us cleansed from sin and all its forms and manifestations. Woo! That you can walk with the Lord. But what happens if you fail? Put a eight up there real quick, like eight. Now we're walking in the spirit and we're being cleansed and 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 and, and all of a sudden I, I make a mistake and and I say hey, do something and it is sin. And then, and, and, and then I said, no, I didn't sin. I, I didn't sin. He said, no, wait a minute. If we say we have no sin, when we have sin, uh, you follow me with what, Paul, uh, what John is talking there. See, if we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are, are sinners or been sinning, we delude and lead ourselves astray and the truth which the gospel presents is not in us, does not dwell in our hearts. So I'm walking in the light and everything, and I sin. And everybody here knows I sin. No, I didn't sin. 
No. The Lord says, just, just confess it. Very simple. Put your pride down. It was my fault that you got angry. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. All right, I want you to catch this now. Go to, ver, ver, go to verse 9. But, but just admit, verse 9, 1 John 1, 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned, Willie, I sinned, and I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Okay. Now, now we're going to have fellowship one uh, to another. Now I'm back in 1 John 1, what? 7. I'm, see? Now that gets me back into 1 John 1, 7. And then I can enjoy the Lord and enjoy fellowship with one another. How many see the picture? Okay. All right. So that we have sinned and confess our sin. He is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will and purpose, thought, and action. And bingo, I'm clean again, and now I'm operating back in verse 7. Everybody got the picture? That's what John is saying. All right. Okay, now let's go back over to Colossians now. Now, here we go. We're going to get about 10 minutes, a little insight about Jesus here. Verse 15, uh, Colossians 1, 15. Here we go. Now, he, that is Jesus, is in, is, he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. All right, go to the next verse. Because God does everything through his Son, for it was in him that all things, that is in Christ, that all things were created. All things were created by Jesus Christ. How many of you know that? Amen. God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. God was in Christ creating everything. Notice that all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen and, and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his service, intervention, and in and for him. And that includes us. We've been created for him. Go to the next verse. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things. We're talking about Christ here now. And he himself, Christ, existed before all things, and in Christ all things consist, cohesive, are held together. Well, Everything is held together by the word of his power. Go to the next verse. And he himself, okay, he also is the head of his body, the church. Oh, that's us. Seeing he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place, stand first, and be preeminent. Now, let's stop there and, and, and say, Lord, you are Lord. I made you Lord. You're preeminent in my life. First place. How many see that? Preeminence means first place. Now, you know within yourself if, if, you, if you're not there yet. And if you're not, it'd be a good night to say, Lord, your first place from here on in. It's really been about me and about John, Harry, and, and the president, and Joe Blow, and who, who, and do whatever. And, but from now on, your first place. Gee whiz. Not very fun to be a Christian. I belong to him, and I got to do what he wants me to do. Let me tell you something. Just do what you want to do, and you get in trouble. <laughs> if you think that's so great, yeah, yeah, you might end up, oh, gain the whole world. I got the whole world. Ha, 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 it's all mine, you mine. You don't have to try to make and yourself to be soul. number one in the, in the church. You or, or, you know, I'm the, I'm the head of the head of the head. And <laughs> Listen. Let me, let me tell you something. You'd be surprised how much freedom you'll get by just loosening yourself from everybody and every position that you think is so great. I ain't trying to be a preacher. He made me a preacher. 
this young man was talking to this elderly saint and said, yeah, he says, I'm going to school and I'm learning to be a preacher. And she said, son, you don't learn to be a preacher. You is or you ain't. <laughs> See, the, 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 the worldly mind can't understand that. And I've seen people, you know, trying to promote themselves. I, and I have them all the time calling me. A, a lot of times call me up, but they want to come and preach. I had somebody here the other day that, that was, you know, moving in that direction. I said, you know, I, right now I've got a lot of preachers in this church. And I, they don't know, but I aim to really give them a lot of work. I'm going to let them preach a lot. And that way when Monday comes, I can just sit back and relax. And they be fighting the devil. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Woo! No wonder I feel so good for 80 years old. Man, who wants to preach Sunday? <laughs> Oh, no, that's just what he goes through. Every, boy, he is. Uh, all right, let's move on here. Now, where are we at? All right, we is. Boy, we're moving along here. That's verse 18. All right, go to 19. Oh, I love it. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of divine perfection, power, attributes should dwell in him permanently. And we are in him, and he is in us. Whew. Next. And God's purpose proposed that through and by the service, the intervention of him, that is Christ the Son, all things should be completely reconciled back to himself, back to the Father, whether on earth or in heaven, as through him, that is the, the that the Father made peace by means of the blood of his cross. It's done, it's finished, it's complete. Our job is to tell the world about the gospel. Amen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And let me tell you this, and it got by two minutes. Folks, some will accept and some won't. That ain't our business. Our job is to to plant the word, sow the seed, water the seed, and God gives the increase. Amen. Very simple, not complicated, relax in it. People, I, listen, there's always going to be somebody that's dying. There's going to be people that are being born. People have problems. That's just part of this old fallen world. Get used to it. Do what you can as God leads you to help them. Love them where they're at, but don't pick it up on yourself. Keep it in God's hand. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Amen. And one more scripture we're going to put up on the board, and that's in Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 28. And we'll close on this. Come to me, all you who are labor, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. I know what it is to pick up this and pick up that and pick up this and pick up that, pick up this, pick up that, pick up this, pick up that. What happened to Brother Bob? <laughs> We, we buried him last week. <laughs> you, I mean, you know, I'm telling the truth. We can pick it up. Turn it loose. It's God's business. Just flow in your lane. Just flow in your lane. That's all you got to do. Don't get over on my lane. Don't get over Willie's lane. Everybody just flow in their lane, and everything will work out just fine. Trust the Lord. Cast all your cares upon him. Oh, I love it. One more verse up there, the next verse, 30. And we'll close. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, 
but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light. Tweet, 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 tweet. Easy. Ooh. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. So what are you carrying tonight? Turn it loose. Give it to Jesus. That doesn't mean you're going to be unspiritual. That means you're really spiritual. Just turn it loose. You're an instrument in God's hands, and he'll direct and guide you. You need not worry. You really need not worry. And you say, oh, I wish God would give me something to do. At 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody calls. I'm down here at the hospital. Can you come down here and pray for me, Brother Bob? <laughs> Click. <laughs> Don't you worry. You make yourself available, and God will use you. Father, we thank you now. We give you glory and praise for this night. In Jesus' name, amen.